be familiar with Shin Han color from some of my Shin Han Twin Touch reviews over on the blog. But for those of you not familiar with the company Shin Han, they are a Korean art supply manufacturer who makes everything from oil colors to the, the Touch Twin markers. So they have a few different types of watercolor. They've got their PWC Extra Fine Watercolor, the Shin Han Professional Watercolor, and the Xiaomi Watercolor. The PWC watercolors, which we don't have here, make use of single pigments so that they can get the cleanest, brightest colors possible. And they tend to have superior light fastness ratings. There's 84 colors in the PWC line. The Shin Han Professional Watercolor, which we're looking at here, um, has 30 bright colors it makes use of bright, pure pigments, and there's a high degree of light fastness and adhesiveness. And then finally, the Xiaomi watercolors are for student watercolor artists, and it's a carefully selected palette of essential colors with 24 colors in the range. They have been designed to have optimum transparency and to practice a wide range of watercolor techniques. You can find the PWC watercolors on Amazon. A 32 color set will start at $19.35. You can also find the Shin Han professional watercolor sets like this one here on Amazon as well. We're looking at the 13 color set today, which I paid $12.97 for using Amazon Prime. I haven't found the Xiaomi watercolors on Amazon, but I did find the Xiaomi opaque watercolors. So like gouache on Amazon, they are more expensive, but you get them in little pots. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on our Shin Han Professional Watercolor Unboxing Swatch. So this box comes taped on both sides. And inside are 13 7.5 milliliter tubes. And I've been very satisfied with Shin Han's quality in the past. Now, years ago, I picked up a couple tubes of Shin Han watercolor from my local Jerry's Artorama when they were on super sale. And I never really gave them a fair chance to stand on their own. So I'm excited to take a look at them today. So inside we have our 13 colors, including white. We've got white, black, brown, red, vermilion hue, yellow ochre, permanent yellow deep, lemon yellow, yellow green, viridian hue, ultramarine, Prussian blue, and violet. So we've got a pretty good range of colors. Now, there isn't a swatch sheet on the inside of this, which is, again, spoiled. I won't lie. Magello has some nice swatch sheets for the interior. So for swatching, I'm going to use fluid watercolor paper, and I'm using the cellulose base watercolor for the initial swatch. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use I want to find one that can put down a wide enough line. I'm going to use a waterproof brush pin to put down a couple lines so we can test for opacity. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and as I let it dry, show you the tubes. And I'm going to put a dot of each color while well, I think about it. I should probably even do more test lines because I find that when I do the opacity test and I have the dot right there, it always tends to be very opaque, which I'm putting a lot of pigment down so that makes sense. So we'll try having them kind of further spaced apart. And their watercolors seem to be color coded. I'm not sure if this corresponds with their marker system. It would be really cool if Shin, Shin Han has an overarching color system for all their products, the way Faber Castell has, or the way Kuratake has the, um, they have a Kuro color system. All right, so we've got all 13 colors. We've got white, black, brown, red, vermilion hue, yellow ochre, permanent yellow deep, lemon yellow, yellow green, viridian hue, ultramarine, Prussian blue, and violet. 
And if any of my art nerds on Patreon is interested in a dot sample card of any of the two watercolors I reviewed, let me know on Patreon and I'll try to get one out to you guys. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes to dry, give the lines I drew a few minutes to just kind of cure on the paper surface, and then we'll do our swatch test. All right, we've got our water, we've got our paper, and we've got our watercolors. So let's go ahead and get swatching. Now I'm just using an inexpensive synthetic brush. Oh, that black does not feel right. Let's, let's try. So far, I am really, really satisfied with these paints. The colors seem very vibrant, vivid. There's a good color selection. I feel like you should be able to mix what you need to mix with these 13 colors, give or take the white. Um, and I think the price point really can't be beat. So I'm gonna put them through a few demonstration tests once this is dried, and we'll see if any of that changes. While I let these dry, Shinhan has some other really interesting products. Shinhan Professional Korean Color, SH Korean Color, and then Pass Colors. And I feel like these are graded in the same way the, um, the three different watercolor tiers are graded. And they kind of remind me of Holbein Iridori watercolors. So with the professional Korean color, you get 50 unique and vivid colors, high quality pigments, um, authentic colors with far Eastern tone. And it's designed to be painted on Hanji paper. The SH Korean color is, um, let me see if I can actually, 13 vivid colors. And it doesn't really seem to differ from the professional Korean colors, at least from the website. Um, and then past color is great. It's kind of like um, an intermediary between watercolor and gouache um, because they can be both transparent and opaque. And it's just all about the water dilutions. And there's 48 vibrant colors with these. So I would love to try any one of those three, but ideally probably the hybrid, the professional Korean colors and the past colors because they sound really interesting. So I'm gonna see if I can dig those up, but if I can't, I would love leads from you guys. So looking at the professional Korean colors on on uh, Amazon, they do have them. I can get 12, 20 milliliter tubes, 12 of them for 64.89, which is a little rich for my blood, but I can always keep looking. And uh, they really do seem very similar, at least in terms of like intention to the Iridori, the Holbein Iridori line. So I would love to get my hands on these. I'm gonna keep an eye out for them at a slightly less expensive price point. That's just a little more than I can afford right now. And hopefully I can get back to you guys with those because the color palette is gorgeous. And I'm just always interested in getting to play with traditional color palettes. So you guys can see that this swatch test has just about dried, some some still wet areas, but honestly, the colors are about as vibrant as when I put them down. Now, I just finished writing a blog post on my three favorite techniques, blending, layering, and glazes. So I think I wanna try those out with these because that's usually the make or break for me with watercolors is if I can't do those three techniques, then it's just not worth it to me. And I know color mixing is also really imp uh, important. I feel like that kind of falls in with those three techniques though. So we're going to start we're doing a wet and a wet blend with red and permanent yellow deep. And when we're working from the tube, they react very quickly to the water. So good color reaction, nice depth of color. And I'm gonna get rid of some of the excess paint that's on my brush. And I'm just gonna kinda 
lightly mix the ketchup and the mustard together. And then using clean water, I'll just try to blend out a little bit with just some water to see how that moves and then we'll pop it up so it will actually go. But I'm pretty happy with that. Let's actually, let's try, let's try color layering. And this is probably the wrong direction to go in, but we'll do a mass tone of the red and a mass tone of the yellow. We'll let them both dry. So blending seems to work nice and there seems to be good pigment movement too. So next, I'm going to do layering. We're gonna do single color layering, I think. And we're just gonna use this yellow green. And I'm gonna do just kind of a block, not even being careful. We're just gonna do a block of yellow green and we're gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna do another block of yellow green to use for glazing. And I love, there's actually some depth of color to this color. Um, you can get some, some variety. There's a little bit of shading going on depending on how, how much of the color you use. I always appreciate that. So we're gonna let these dry, layering, glazing. And these are gonna be glazes too. All right, so our first yellow green square is mostly dry. We're gonna try some same color layering. Looking good so far. I'm gonna grab Viridian Hue. That'll be our next color when this dries. All right, our second layer has dried. Probably should have started with a blue and then we could have gotten like a nice cheapy grass thing going. That's okay. I'm gonna grab some Viridian Hue. Now, we also talked about testing out glazes. So I'm gonna grab some red and the, the point of a glaze is it's actually a very, very thin application of the color. So I'm gonna really water it down does seem to be some color pickup. Not sure if maybe I hadn't allowed it to dry all the way. Now let's try with the old mustard. This is definitely still wet in the corner. Same problem. I may not be letting it dry enough. I can try over here on this swatch of green. Seems to be really a problem and I'm not sure, again, if it's fully dry, but it seems to most be a problem where it's thickly applied, like it's reactivating the prior color. Normally when I'm doing glazes for say seven inch Kara, I don't wait too, too long between layers. I kind of wait until the surface texture is no longer damp, but might even still be cool to the touch. And I tend to work on cellulose papers. Let's do a splot of Prussian blue up here. But I honestly, this is honestly kind of inconclusive and what it really truly merits is a field test that we can know whether or not these are actual problems or just sort of cause it's wet outside, damp outside today kind of problems. So I'm gonna let these layers dry. So not everything is dry and that's okay. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this Prussian blue. I mean, even though we're getting some pickup, the colors layer pretty, like the Prussian blue over the yellow looks nice. Now we've got some wet areas here, so there's gonna be a little bit of pickup. I'm not gonna be concerned about that. But so far, everything looks really good. The colors look really clean and really clear. I have a couple of concerns, but those can only really be addressed by doing a field test. My second Hanbei 12 piece half palette came in. So we're going to be filling it with the Shin Han watercolors and finishing up our Shin Han basic unboxing swatch. 
And just like with the Turner watercolors, I opted for a small, inexpensive watercolor palette to house these because I find that I actually use watercolors when they're in half pan or full pan palettes rather than from tubes. When I have watercolors in tubes, they just don't really get used unless it's to refill half pans. So you guys can find a link to this half pan palette in the description below. Also, like the Turner watercolors, these have numbers and names. So rather than writing, as well as life fastness ratings, which is kind of cool. In fact, I'll go over them really quickly for you. So their white 401 is a two light fastness. Their black is a three. Their brown is a two. Their red is a two. Their vermilion hue is a two. Their yellow ochre is a two. Their permanent yellow deep is a two. Their lemon yellow is a two. Their yellow green is a two. Their viridian hue is a three. Ultramarine is a three. Prussian blue is a two and violet is a two. So these are not very light fast watercolors which would make them ideal for student watercolors, for learning, for using a lot of paint, um, but would not make them ideal if you wanted to paint things to sell, to give as gifts, um, anything more professional than that. And I am not the biggest fan of how this is laid out. So I'm gonna reorganize it to suit my own color chromatic needs. Okay, so I've got this reorganized into something that is a little more like how I would normally set up my palette. So as I do with most of my half palettes, I'm gonna write the color number rather than the color name on the side. I'm going to use washi tape to adhere them in the little tray. And that's about that. So I'm gonna do that in time-lapse. So we've got our half pans all filled out. Since this is a 13 color set, I put the white here. But with these sort of sets, you could even fill this row and carry 18 colors with you, or you could even put some full pans in there if you like. These sort of um, super flexible, little inexpensive half pan watercolor palettes can be really useful and really helpful. So I'm gonna let these dry for 24 hours and then we're gonna revisit these and see how they swatch from dried tubes because not all watercolors reactivate very well. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So this Shin Han palette has had plenty of time to dry, multiple weeks because I got sick. So you guys can see that a lot of evaporation has occurred, some cracking, most of that is just cosmetic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water to every pan just to activate these colors since they've had plenty of time to dry out. And I'll remind you guys that these colors are not necessarily designed to reactivate like this. So this is a, your mileage may vary sort of situation. Some, pan, uh, some tube watercolors work really well as half pan watercolors and some are just terrible for it. And I'm gonna be doing this swatch test on Blick Premier cotton rag watercolor paper. So this is 100% cotton rag watercolor paper, 140 pounds, block bound. I really like this paper. And I've already done a black line at the top so that we can test for opacity. And I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna be doing two types of swatches today. I am going to be doing a gradiated swatch so that we can see if there's any sort of inconsistency or sedimentation or anything that might be interesting and then a mass tone swatch so you guys can get an idea of the color in its sort of undiluted form. 
And just a little bit of a reminder, this is sort of the mid-range of quality for Shin Han watercolors. There's a student grade below this, and then there is an even nicer professional grade above this. And then they also have some traditional watercolors, which I would love to test. So Shin Han has an interesting range of options that are not necessarily easily available in the U.S. because they are a Korean art supply company. allow these watercolors to have a chance to dry, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons on Patreon. The Art Nerd community is what makes these sort of reviews possible. It allows me to buy the sort of materials I need to do these sort of reviews. All the papers, the brushes, that sort of stuff comes out of my Patreon budget. So I want to thank my Art Nerds so much for making this possible, and I hope these videos are useful, helpful, and informative to them. If you enjoy this sort of content, you can learn more about how you can join the Art Nerd community over at patreon.com slash natosoup. So this isn't 100% dry, but it's pretty close. It definitely can give you guys a comparison of how the colors look when wet versus when dry. I choose to use nice cotton rag paper for some of these tests because I feel like it gives these colors the best opportunity to really shine and be vibrant. It also gives the pigments a chance to kind of sediment a little bit as the violet and the ultramarine both seem to have done. And sedimentation isn't a problem. It's not um, a detrimental sort of effect. It's just something that's nice to know about. It's something some people look for. It's something some people look to avoid. The Shin Han professional watercolors are very vibrant. They put me in mind a bit of the Magello Mission Gold watercolors, except at a cheaper price point. So this could be really good if you're looking for vibrant, intense color. They are still fairly vibrant despite being re-wet from a tube and it really wasn't hard to re-wet them. I didn't have any colors that were poor performers. Um, everything re-wet really easily. So really the drying is more of just a cosmetic thing. And you can add some glycerin to that if you want to. I, I don't, because I don't like messing with the makeup of my paints too much. And I don't really care about cosmetic defects. So some of the colors are a little bit, have a little bit of opacity to them. They're not fully transparent, which is fine. Um, the yellow ochre is a little more transparent than many yellow ochres are. So they may have a little bit of optical brightener in them since they muddied the water really quickly, but they seem like they would be a very excellent, affordable choice for someone looking for a student watercolor set. And I really look forward to getting to play with them in the field test. These Shin Han Artist watercolors were purchased out of pocket from Amazon. You guys can find links to where you can get your own in the description below. The colors included in this 13 color set are Lemon Yellow, Permanent Yellow Deep, Vermilion Hue, Red, Violet, Ultramarine, Yellow Green, Viridian Hue, Prussian Blue, Yellow Ochre, Brown, White, and Black. Every tube has a light fastness rating. None of them are particularly light fast, so I would not use these as an alternative to professional watercolors. However, Shin Han does offer a professional watercolor line that's even higher than this professional watercolor line. The colors are vibrant. They work well from tube or from reconstituted half pan, and it's quite an affordable little set if you're just looking to experiment with bright, colorful watercolor. I really enjoyed doing this review and I really enjoyed getting to play with Shin Han Professional Watercolors. I think they are a wonderful alternative if you're looking for student grade watercolors at an affordable price point and you're not really willing to invest a lot because you're not yet sure if you're going to enjoy watercolor. I definitely look forward to playing with these in the field test, putting them to work and seeing whether or not they can keep up with other watercolors that I've tested. I hope you guys will stick around on this channel, maybe click that little bell for notifications and keep an eye out for the field test for these Shin Han Artist watercolors, especially if you're considering purchasing them or would like to see how they handle. If you're looking for more watercolor reviews, I have loads of them here on this channel. Check out my watercolor playlist. You can find that in the card right here. And if you're looking for more tips, tricks, and tutorials, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my phenomenal watercolor basics series. 
It's a tutorial series that is free for anyone to enjoy that shows you how to use watercolor for illustration and for comics, which kind of makes it an unusual little tutorial series. If you enjoy watercolor art and you like my art, please check out my webcomic 7inch Kara at 7inchkara.com slash 7inchkara.tumblr.com. I will have links to everything in the description below so you guys can check it out at your own pace and your own time. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I will see you guys again really soon, but I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.